Hello and welcome to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast, where each week, Pastor Jeff Cranston explores biblical theology that provides practical life applications in an understandable way. Thanks for joining us at the table. Let's get started. Hello again, and welcome back to Kitchen Table Theology. I'm your host, Tiffany Coker, and along with my dad, Pastor Jeff Cranston, we believe what the great missionary Hudson Taylor once said. There is a living God. He has spoken in the Bible. He means what he says and will do all he has promised. Here at Kitchen Table Theology, we are seeking not only to help you know deep, solid biblical theology, but to know the word of God and the promises of God that are given to us in his word, all while holding to solid theological truths in your heart, soul, and mind. On today's podcast, we're continuing with a brief overview of the New Testament book known to us as the Acts of the Apostles. Beginning back at episode number 143, we have discussed and studied a number of Old Testament and New Testament books with their theological themes. So if you've missed any, I encourage you, go back, check those out, give them a listen and see what you might learn. Dad, how are you doing today? Well, I think voice-wise, I'm doing better than I was on the last podcast, so the voice is coming back a little bit, but I'm doing good. I had my Southern Pecan coffee this morning, and I've got iced tea with me right <laughs> <Great>. now. <laughs> so, yeah, that's it's always a good day when you can have your favorite coffee and your favorite iced tea, and I'm looking forward to jumping into one of my favorite books by one of my favorite authors, The Acts and the Apostles by good old Dr. Luke. Yes, and just a reminder to us, we're going to call this Volume 2 of Luke's contribution to the New Testament canon. When we looked a few weeks ago at the Gospel according to Luke, we mentioned that was Volume 1, the Book of Acts will be, we're going to call Volume 2. So back in the Gospel according to Luke, Luke told us about Jesus's life, his ministry, and then in Acts 1-1, it says, and all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up into heaven. Yeah, that's right. The book of Acts is different from Luke's gospel because in in Acts, Luke picks up where he left off in the gospel of Luke. So now we find him recording the spread of Christianity from the coming of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to and the birth of the church is Acts chapter 2 to Paul's arrival in Rome to preach the gospel in the world's capital. It's the written record of the continuation of those things Jesus began while he walked on earth. The book of Acts covers about 30 years, and they are incredibly important years of transition. What do you mean by transition? Well, at the beginning of the book, we see the gospel first being preached only to the Jews. And the early church was composed largely, primarily, I would say, of Jewish believers. But then we begin to see the transition of more and more Gentiles responding to the gospel and being included in the church. And it was during this time period that the Christian church became distinct from Judaism. It really began to set itself apart from just a gathering of Jewish believers. So we already know that the book of Acts was written by Luke, just mentioned that, who wrote the gospel that bears his name. And in that episode 154, when we covered the gospel of Luke, we did a mini biography on Luke. So if you didn't hear that one, you need a refresher. You can pause. You can go back listening to the opening minutes of that episode on the gospel of Luke to find out a little bit more about the author. But what we may not know is when was the book of Acts composed? You just told us that it covers about a 30-year time period, but when did Luke write it? Was it written around the same time that he wrote the gospel? He just kept right on writing. Was it written before (laughs) this gospel? Was it written a few years later? All the inquiring minds want to know. Please tell us. (laughs) Yeah, that you're full of questions and the good (laughs) ones. So, okay, let's look at some possible dates for when Acts was written. If, If we go to the end of the book, We see that Acts concludes pretty abruptly with Paul being imprisoned in Rome, and he's waiting to bring his appeal before Caesar. It's worth noting that in this history of the early Christian church, Luke mentioned neither Paul's death, which we know occurred between 64 and 68 AD, nor did Luke mention the persecution of Christians that broke out under Nero 
And we know that happened AD 64. And surely with the detailed and the detailed writing Luke did, and the, from what we know about who Luke was, surely he would have included those major events, but he didn't. The persecution of the church and Paul's death, but he didn't mention those. Meaning that more than likely, Luke completed the book before either of those events occurred. So that places the writing date somewhere between, and most scholars will land on this, between AD 60 and AD 62. And so during that time, Paul was in prison and he was awaiting the resolution of his appeal. And of course, that appeal was not granted and it ended in his martyrdom. Okay, Luke is the author. That has never really been in question, even from ancient times. It was always a given. It's written sometime between AD 60 and 62. We got the background there. Let's move into the theological themes. With a book this size, 28 chapters, I'm guessing there are many themes, but maybe we can pull out some of the major key themes in this book. Yeah, this is when doing what we're doing here on the podcast gets difficult. <laughs> I, I can't, it I can't down. wait. Yeah, it's like, I can't wait to get the Psalms with 150 chapters <laughs> and how we're going to do that. But yeah, there there are so many theological themes in this book. But because of our time and because this is a podcast, let's just pull out a few that I think are absolutely major, absolutely key themes. But before I do that, I'd love to tell everybody a true story. I think it's a really clever story, and it will springboard us into the themes. Great. We love a story. story. Yeah, everybody does. It's a pastor in Indianapolis named Russ Blowers, and he was a member of the Rotary Club. And at the club meeting each week, a different member would stand up and take about three, four minutes, tell a little bit about his or her job, what, you know, their business, their job, their career, whatever. So finally the week came, it was Russ's turn. And remember, he was a pastor. Here's what he said. Here's how he described his job. And I'm quoting, I'm with a global enterprise. We have branches in every country in the world. We have our representatives in nearly every parliament and boardroom on earth. We're in the motivation and behavior alteration. We run hospitals, feeding stations, crisis pregnancy centers, universities, public publishing houses, and nursing homes. We care for our clients from birth to death. We are into life insurance and fire insurance. We perform spiritual heart transplants. Our original organizer owns all the real estate on earth, plus an assortment of galaxies and constellations. He knows everything and lives everywhere. Our product is free for the asking. And... And then he said, by the way, there's not even enough money to buy it, even if you had all the money in the world. <laughs> he said, our CEO was born in a hick town, worked as a carpenter, didn't own a home, was misunderstood by his family, hated by his enemies, walked on water, was condemned to death without a fair trial, and arose from the dead. I talk with him every day. <laughs> I thought, what a great way to describe as a pastor the, the, the church, very unique, and I'm sure it made everybody sit up and pay attention. And of course, he's speaking about the church of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And the book of Acts tells the story of the birth of the church and its first 30 years or thereabouts. It's an amazing book. And this book, as you read through it, it's filled with intrigue, danger, excitement, major moves of God, healings, miracles, and the list can go on and on. <laughs> that is a great story. Thanks for sharing. And Acts is all about the church. So I'm glad you introduced us to that. But it also does have Many theological themes. Is that where we're going here? <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, we'll eventually get there. So yeah, let's dive in here. Even though the book of Acts is of a narrative genre, in other words, it's a story from beginning to end, there, there is an abundance of theological themes that can be traced throughout the book. Luke's main purpose was not necessarily to communicate theological ideas in the same way in which other New Testament letters were, say like the book of Romans. But Luke's purpose was rather to continue to share what the resurrected Jesus was doing on earth from heaven. Maybe good just to remind ourselves in the first verse, he's writing to an individual. And we touched on this, I think, also in episode 154, a person named Theophilus, which means lover of God. And uh, there's some 
mild argumentation between scholars, whether that was an individual or whether as lover of God, it was a name given to a group of people who love God. Not really here or there, but he's writing to continue what happened after Jesus ascended into heaven. So the following, and here's where we'll, we'll dive right in. Some of the key theological themes. First of all, as you read Acts, you are going to readily see God's mission for multi-ethnic, multi-generational gatherings of believers. Now, that's a sort of a fancy way that I'm saying the church, but God's mission for multi-ethnic, multi-generation gather, multi-generational gatherings of believers. So throughout the book, men and women are encountering the good news that Jesus was crucified, but is now alive. And this message begins in Jerusalem, primarily with the Jewish people. However, through the power of the Holy Spirit coming at Pentecost in chapter 2, it quickly spreads through Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of most of the known world. And so it, it was God's mission, and still is, for the gospel to spread and bring people to Christ from different backgrounds and cultures and bring them together. It was never meant for one people group, but for all people and all nations. And throughout the book, we see the gospel going to both Jews and Gentiles, educated and uneducated, young and old, and into numerous cultures and people groups. And in that, I think we can see how the gospel quickly spread from Jews to Gentiles to different languages, ethnicities, so on and so on, which really, I think, gives us a huge glimpse into God's heart, doesn't it? So we have God's mission for multi-ethnic, multi-generational gatherings of believers. What's next? Well, we can't go far speaking about thieves and acts without bringing up the Holy Spirit right off the bat. Here's where we really begin to meet and understand the Holy Spirit. And the study of the Holy Spirit, pause for just a second, in theological circles is referred to as pneumatology, which is a really big theological word, but all it means is the study of the Spirit. So, Dad, you and Jen Denton, who used to be our wonderful co-host, did an entire series on this back, it was episodes 42 to 47. So if you want to take a deeper dive into the person of the Holy Spirit, you can go back and check out those episodes 42 to 47 for pneumatology. Yeah, and hope that you'll do that if that's what you'd like to do. So the Holy Spirit was active throughout the Old Testament and the Gospels. But in the book of Acts, we see him indwelling the lives of believers. Jesus promised the disciples they would receive power to be his witnesses when the Holy Spirit comes. Now, that was, that's verse 8 of chapter 1 of Acts. Not long after that promise, the Spirit comes at Pentecost and remains in the lives of believers. And this was new. This had not really happened At this level before, the indwelling of the Spirit throughout the book of Acts was an indication of an authentic belief that people held that Jesus was Lord. And when you enter into that relationship with Christ, one of the results of that is the indwelling Holy Spirit in you. And we see that like we see it now for the very first time in the book of Acts. That's so cool. So we have God's mission for multi-ethnic, multi-generational gatherings of believers as our first major key theme. The second one, the presence of the Holy Spirit, which we see throughout the entire book of Acts. What's another theme you can share with us? Well, we're going to do a three in one here. We'll call it persecution, protection, and providence. Persecution, protection, and providence. Throughout the book of Acts, believers of Jesus experienced intense persecution because people were opposed to the gospel big time. In chapter 5, we find the apostles being flogged by the religious, the Jewish religious authorities. In chapter 7, Stephen, the first martyr, was stoned to death because of his presentation of the gospel to the Jews. Chapter 8, believers were imprisoned because of their faith. Chapter 12, James was killed. Peter was arrested multiple times. Chapter 4, chapter 12. And in addition, the last seven chapters record Paul's imprisonment and his trials before Felix and Festus. However, so there's the persecution. However, God's protection and providence is also clearly evident throughout the book 
as the Holy Spirit uses the persecution of the believers to the, advance the gospel, advance the mission of the church, and we begin to see thousands of people come to faith in Christ. I think you have given us a pretty clear overview already of the book of Acts with introducing the church as a multi-ethnic, multi-generational gathering. We have touched on the Holy Spirit and the indwelling that happened of the the Holy Spirit in the believers' lives in Acts. And now I know much of the book you just mentioned, persecution, but also God's protection and God's providence throughout of that, throughout all of the persecution. That kind of wraps it up, but I'm guessing there's more because there's always more (laughs) to learn. So what is, what's another theme? We'll we'll make this the last one. And Obviously, as I said earlier, kitchen table theologian, there are there's so much more. But we would certainly be kicked out of theological podcasting world if we fail to mention this one. And it's the church. The theology of the church begins here in the book of Acts. So we find the apostles, and they're going out and preaching. So their job early in the book of Acts is to bear witness to Christ by proclaiming the gospel, but they just couldn't do it themselves. I think it was Paul, maybe it's Luke, I'm sorry, I can't remember, where he refers to believers as living letters, living letters. So the the apostles couldn't be the only living letters to the world. So to solve that problem, the apostles began to delegate much of the responsibility of being authentic witnesses to the church. So the apostles were doing it, but they were training others to do it as well. So as people are added to the church through the evangelism of the apostles, these believers also became living letters in their own right. And they began to live out the gospel. They testified to their families and their neighbors about Jesus. Some of them even became missionaries and evangelists. So in that way, the apostles created a self-replicating model for authentic evangelism among each generation, among each people group among each language group, and the church began to take on the responsibility of the evangelization of the world, which is how Jesus intends it. So to be sure, and we see this, that most of the people in the churches were not able to evangelize with the same authority and the miraculous confirmation that attended the apostles preaching. When you see them preaching, you see healings take place, Uh, miracles take place. Well, why was that? Why wasn't that true of everybody? Well, these guys were apostles, and they were sent apart for a very distinct and very important purpose, a a number of purposes, and one of them was to get the church up and running. So, But nevertheless, the Holy Spirit was still pleased to work through the church's authentic testimony and their lives in the Word of God, and thousands of of new believers were converted to Christ through these means. For instance, listen to what Acts 11, 19 through 21 says about the believers who were scattered by persecution, as Tiff reads these verses for us. Meanwhile, the believers who had been scattered during the persecution after Stephen's death traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch of Syria. They preached the word of God, but only to Jews. However, some of the believers who went to Antioch from Cyprus and Cyrene began preaching to the Gentiles about the Lord Jesus. The power of the Lord was with them, and a large number of these Gentiles believed and turned to the Lord. So that's how it spread. Persecution, the believers scatter, and everywhere they go, the gospel goes with them. And the result is large numbers of people turn to the Lord. So We find the birth of the church in Acts 2 and follow her growth through her first 30 years. And we see how God began not only to build his church, but how he began to reach the world with the gospel through the church. Acts is an absolutely incredible story. And I think part of it is, and I have to be careful how I say this, but part of it is because the book of Acts is still being written. Now, don't, that's why I say I got to be careful. (laughs) Well, and you can quote me on it. It's the book of Acts is completed right. as the Bible was completed in its writing. But the spirit of the book of Acts, the work of evangelizing the gospel, et cetera, et cetera, that is still going on. And that's why the Christian church is still here today. We can worship God in heaven. 
We can serve God in heaven. We can grow in our relationship with him in heaven. The only thing we can't do in heaven is evangelize. Mm -hmm. And that's the main reason that when you come to faith in Christ, you're not immediately transported to heaven because God keeps us here on earth because he has a job for us to do. And that job is to evangelize the world. It has been that way since Acts chapter 2, and it's going to be that way until Jesus returns. You could say we're maybe living out Acts chapter 29. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good way to think about it. All right. That was a lot. And we didn't really even scratch the surface, did we? (laughs) Uh, But thank you for those theological themes and just a brief insight into the book of Acts. So Kitchen Table Theologian, we encourage you to roll up your sleeves, open your Bible, get a nice cup of your favorite Southern Pecan coffee, and read the book of Acts for yourself. It is really a glorious story that, as we just discussed, is still being written. So get out there and enjoy that. We're so so thankful for y'all listening to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast with us today. If you are enjoying the podcast, would you please leave a rating or review on iTunes? We really do appreciate your help in getting the word out to other people to hear about Kitchen Table Theology. Got an idea. I've yes. got an idea. All right. We've, we've talked a few times about Southern Pecan Coffee. We yeah. haven't done this in a long time. <laughs> so it's just talking about the ratings and reviews. The next person to leave us a review. Okay. If you'll leave us a way to get in touch with you, we'll send you a carton of <laughs> Southern Pecan coffee. If there's and K-cups. That sounds good. And a kitchen table theology mug to drink oh, in we'll your send Southern you Pecan of those coffee. Too. Oh, there you sure. go. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do so it. Leave us a rating and a review. And then let us know you did it by emailing us. Probably it's the best way, right? Yes. That's what I was just going to say. How, how do they do that? Email us at Pastor Jeff at lowcountrycc.org and just say, hey, I left a review. Here's my address for my Southern Pecan coffee. Give me your address and I will get that in the mail to you. <laughs> Sounds great. All right. Anything else you need to add before we wrap it up here? You're good. Okay. Thanks again. Friends at Low Country Community Church here in Bluffton, South Carolina, and our team at Streamline Podcast for making this podcast possible. Thanks to you guys, our listeners, for listening. We're also grateful for our friends at Columbia International University. CIU has been educating people from a biblical worldview with the goal to impact the nations with the message of Christ for 100 years now. They have undergraduate, graduate, seminary programs on campus and online, so check all that out at ciu.edu. And we invite you to join us next week as we resume the Bible overview series with the book of Joshua, another exciting book. So until next time, always remember that the real power of theology is not only knowing it, but applying it. Thanks for joining us at the table. You've been listening to the Kitchen Table Theology Podcast with Pastor Jeff Cranston. Join us next time for more insights into biblical truth. If you'd like to know more on today's topic, please check out our show notes. If you have a question from today's podcast, kindly email us at pastorjeff at lowcountrycc.org. If you're enjoying this podcast, would you consider leaving a rating and review? We deeply appreciate your help in getting the word out. And be sure to subscribe on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, or in your favorite podcasting app to continue this journey with us as we learn about and apply God's word to our lives. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time here at Kitchen Table Theology.